Nate calls it the most challenging makeover he's ever done. It is the smallest space I've ever been in. Only 250 itty bitty square feet. Nate and I are standing in a replica. This is it. Now watch the big reveal. Then inside Nate's new teeny tiny New York apartment, he's tearing down the walls. And the results? Plus incredible inventions, the latest products. Yeah. Big ideas if you live in a small space. Hey, we're, we're in bed together. Next. America! America, this is a year to make your home your castle. How many of you think that your house is too small? And that you don't have enough space? Don't have enough space? No. Well, today is the day to stop letting your lack of square footage limit your vision, because Mr. Cutie Pie himself, Nate Burkus, <laughs> He's back with the answers to all of your small space dilemmas and what he calls the most challenging. He said it now. I didn't say it. It's the most challenging makeover of his career. Don't you want to see what that would be? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Joe, uh, pull wide. Let's get a wide shot here. Here's the deal. Nate and I are standing in a replica of my first guest, 250. Not 250,000, not 25,000, not 2,000, but 250 square foot apartment. <laughs> this is it. This is it. <laughs> yep. It's like this. Back hi. to, hi. Hi, how are you? Hi, hey, how are you? Working, how are you? I'm sleeping. This is it. Like, I mean, where's the stove part? Where do you, where's it? There wasn't a stove. There wasn't a stove? No. No stove. Really? Yeah, that's the oh, kitchen. Oh, this is, it represents the kitchen, yeah. so the microwave counter. That's There's a, a toaster, a little refrigerator. Yeah. Wow. OK. It's a home so tiny that it's like living in a one-car garage. It is. That's okay. exactly what it feels like. So when we received this tape, we couldn't believe our eyes. But this is it. <laughs> Oprah, I have to tell you, I bought this place a year ago. It's about 250 square feet. Share it with two cats, Louie and Prada. It's a little small. I'm right here in Midtown Manhattan. I walk to work, I walk to visit my friends, restaurants, shops, you name it. Here's my bed slash sofa. I love to read, so I keep my books by my bed. Let me show you my library. Martha's Library. Gotta admit, that is creative. And here's my closet. Whoops, sorry about that. I just don't have room to store the pillows. Here's my study. My desk also dubs as the cat scratching post. Since storage is a problem when you have small spaces, I got these half boxes. And in here is where I put my lingerie. Each half box has a different item. The kitchen, and as you can see, I don't have an oven and I don't have a stove because I don't have any space. My refrigerator is the same size as the kitty litter bed. Now for the bathroom. Oprah, if I ever get a date and he's uncomfortable sitting on my bed with me, he can always come into the bathroom and sit on the toilet. He'll be facing the kitty litter box. So help, Oprah, help. I truly need your help. Well, that would be a challenge. Oh, it was crazy. Crazy. Yeah. So, because Martha's space is so teeny, we weren't sure if a makeover was even possible. So who did we send? Cutie pie to check it out for himself. And this is what happened when Nate arrived. Hi, Martha. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> it's me. <laughs> well, it's yeah. so nice to meet you. Come okay, on well, in now. It's, it's small, tiny, so you have right? to shimmy in. You're not lying, right? It's small. I'm going in. You have to shimmy in. I'm shimmying in. This no. is the smallest space I've ever been in. And Period. And the end. Touch this wall with your hand. OK, here we are. <laughs> this is it. This is the house. Close your eyes for me. Now talk to me about what you think this place should feel like. Um, it feels warm. I like color. Mm -hmm. And I like pattern. OK. Are and there colors that you don't like? Gray. Can't do gray. OK. I'm sitting here head to toe gray. <laughs> right. Hope I'm the right guy for the job. <laughs> OK, so Martha, okay. can we talk about this apartment? Yes. I moved in New Year's Eve 14 months ago. OK. And I didn't have any money to move to hire Eve. a mover. So I used the bus and I walked. You used the bus and you moved into this apartment yep. by yourself? 
I have suitcases in my closet. Okay. How many times did you have to go back and forth? Oh, several. I slept on the floor for six weeks. Did you not have the money to buy the bed in, uh, right away? No, was, at the what? closing I was rolling pennies. Martha's home may be small, but she says she is grateful for every single inch. Nate, this apartment is a gift. There isn't another place on this earth I would rather live in. You've inspired me, really, because I love how full of life and energy you are, and so you trust me to, to do what I need I to do here. I trust you a thousand percent. Thank you. Okay, so many of you saw the show we did recently called The Secret. And this is really in line with that because what Nate was saying about your positive attitude and how, what, you know, the fact that you could sit in that little small space, this little small space and say, there's no place on earth I'd rather live because I'm so grateful for it. That is what drew him to you. You get that, right? Absolutely. That's how that happened. Nate's vision was to transform Martha's tiny little drab apartment into a jaw-dropping jewel box in the city, utilizing every inch of her 250 square feet. In just two and a half weeks, Nate and his team created a one-of-a-kind masterpiece. I haven't seen this either. Can't wait to see it. Well, we're outside of Martha's New York City apartment, and this has been an unbelievable makeover. Take another look at what Martha's apartment used to look like. All right, well, I think it's time to go in. Okay. All right, I will let you open the door. Nate gave the room lots of drama with a tinted ceiling. This is actually a very traditional decorating design. Really? A tinted room. Wall-to-wall -wall floral curtains are in Martha's favorite colors. It's a wonderful beautiful. chandelier. This to that me makes the whole this this makes regal. the whole space feel so regal. glamorous. Martha has more storage than she ever dreamed of with custom floor-to-ceiling closets. Every yeah. square inch of this apartment is utilized now. Oh, absolutely. Every wall absolutely. either has some sort of system. Absolutely. I mean, and people living in small spaces across the country yeah. can do this. You can put fabric, you can come out 20 inches mm -hmm. and have all of the storage behind it. Nate says in a small space, everything must have its own place. Lowe's did a closet made custom closet for you. We counted all your bags, we counted oh, your shoes. I, I wanted oh, everything to have a spot. My, jewelry. My jewelry. It's like, a, it's like a lady's boudoir, yes. you know? I wanted you to have a place where you could sit down like a princess and put your makeup on and get ready for an evening out. So here's your new vanity. Oh, here, have a seat you. right here. Thank you. Remember Martha's old library? Your library is out from under the bed. I have bookshelves. I have a chair so people don't have to sit on the toilet. Nope. You have two chairs, out. actually, and that table lifts up to reveal more storage. Before Martha had no oven, no stove, and a dorm-sized fridge. Now she can cook up a storm in her new state-of-the-art kitchen. Oh, I got a kitchen and, the, and my little bows for Louie and Prada. Martha, these appliances actually do double duty. They're all from GE and they're the Profile Series. The dishwasher is designed to fit under a sink. You have an electric touch sensor cooktop, and this is not a microwave. It's actually the Advantium oven, and it's got four things. So it's a microwave, an oven, a toaster, and a warmer, all in one. And of course, the Profile stainless steel refrigerator. Refrigerator. Yeah, I know, you finally a got refrigerator. it. Refrigerator. The Lowe's gave us a Shenandoah cabinet. And here's the best. Yeah. These all have, like, these yes. pullouts for storage. Oh, cool. Martha's outdated bathroom is now a luxurious little loo. So, Martha, your bath is still small, but I had all of the fixtures reglazed. So the tub has been reglazed, the sink, a new beautiful mirror. New Sorry, floor. I thank forgot. You, thank you for the new floor. <laughs> I hated my other floor. Even Martha's cat received the royal treatment. We didn't forget about Louis and Prada. Remember where your litter box yes. was before? <laughs> Look at this. Yes. This is all they can draw right in there. <laughs> so Martha, I hope you and Louis and Prada are gonna be really happy in this house. Thank you. Thank you so much a thousand times. You're Nate. so welcome. Thank you from Louis. Thank you for Prada. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Well done. 
in 250 square feet. feet. We'll talk to Martha and Nate when we come back. So if they, he can do that in 250 square feet, we're going to tell you today what you can do with your small sp spaces and later what some call the skinniest house in America. I'm back with Nate Berkus, who just tackled what he says was his most challenging makeover yet, a 250-square-foot, itsy-bitsy, teeny-weeny uh, apartment. This is what it looked like before, and this is what Nate did, did to transform it. And I could see that you were really excited about doing it for her. I was. Yeah. I am. I... <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. I am. I am. I'm still actually excited about it because um, Martha really sort of helped me reprioritize some things from my own life. Really? Yeah. I mean, how much space do we all really need? Yeah. And I thought to myself, there was so much joy coming out of that, those four walls, yeah. that I really, it really motivated me to do the best I could do, literally yeah. the best I could do. Yeah, and you, I know you operate from the secret point of view, too. I do. Even before we saw the secret, that's how we live our lives. But she just said yeah, to our whole audience here that she was so happy and grateful for what she has. So right. she's living in that little space. You all heard her say, but there's nowhere else I'd rather, I'd rather live be. on Earth. I'm so happy to have this. Yeah. And it's a perfect place. The location is perfect. It's what I need. I need four walls. I need a roof over my head. I need to feel safe and secure. And that's what I do. I don't need, I'd love to have a duplex penthouse with a wraparound terrace. Yeah. But <laughs> maybe down the road. But that is a perfect place. Yeah. And so I said, the fact that we get thousands and thousands of tapes, and for some reason, the producer was drawn to yours. That's all about that law of attraction. Because you attracted Nate into your life. Thank yeah. goodness. <laughs> Thank goodness. Thank goodness. You're welcome. Thank goodness. You're welcome. Yeah. But I, you know, it's very, that's very true, Oprah, because literally I come in and look at some of the tapes towards the end as the yeah. producers narrow things down, and I was sure that this was the one that I wanted to do. Really? I knew as soon as I heard Martha on the tape, and something did definitely draw me to that space. Well, last year, Nate bought himself a small piece of the Big Apple, <laughs> so we're going to see what that is. I haven't seen... I never see the tapes before, because I always want to see it with the audience, so when they go, ooh, I can go, yeah, honey. <laughs> So let's take a look. Yeah, honey. <laughs> this is my new neighborhood, the West Village of Manhattan. And it makes me so happy just to be walking around the streets of this city. It makes me think of being a little kid with my dad and him saying, Nate, you got to know where to get the best hot dog, the best slice of pizza, all of that stuff. So dad, finally got a place here. I love the sounds, the, the sights, the energy. And this neighborhood in the West Village is all of that. This is my new New York apartment. It's got so much natural light and it has 10 foot ceilings. It's actually 550 square feet, but you know I can tackle a small space. I've got a great idea here that's gonna give me privacy, but it's also gonna make the space seem much, much bigger than 550 square feet. This is my kitchen, and you are not gonna recognize this when I'm done with it. So I just walked through the door to my bedroom, which is coming right off the kitchen. That doesn't feel very gracious to me, so that wall, I'm closing it up. This wall is coming down. Also, fan, gotta go. And this room is so small. So this is a tip for you at home. I'm going up with the furniture and I'll show you what that means. Now there's one room left. It's my tiny little bathroom. Come with me. There are some specific things I'm changing in here. The pink tile. Not quite what I'm after, so that's going away. All right, well, you've seen the tour. You know what it looks like before. I can't wait for you to see the transformation. Nate says he knew instantly how to make his small home away from home just right. Welcome back to my tiny New York apartment. This place looks completely different. Major changes from what it was before. All right, welcome to my living room. I made a decision to paint the entire house white. The floors, the walls, and the ceiling because I wanted the boundaries of this entire space just to go away. If you are living in a small space, you don't have to have small artwork, small photography, or paintings. Look at this. These are huge scaled things for a space this size, but it makes the space feel much larger. If you actually keep things 
very organized and clutter-free, you can have more furniture than you think you can in a small space. Even the air conditioner, which was a huge eyesore, I've taken the focus off of that completely by positioning the desk and the chair in front of it. Think about the inside of a closet. It doesn't necessarily have to be just for storage. This is now my entertainment center slash home office. Remember this over here? It was a wall, just a blank wall, and I basically tore it down, one of my favorite things to do. I made a huge opening and added French doors that I designed because that would make this space seem much larger. All the doors in the entire apartment are all painted this high gloss blue black and that adds architectural interest to a space this small. This is my kitchen. The cabinets were in great shape. I just painted them the same color as the doors. And when I was in Greece last summer, I found in a marine hardware store these little latches, and I brought those home and had those added. And that was a beautiful detail for me that changed the entire feeling of the apartment. Nate installed all new appliances in the tiny kitchen, and to save space, a refrigerator in a drawer. Bottled water, juice, yogurt, fruit, some wine, champagne, and one beer. I ripped apart this entire bathroom. The pink tile has been replaced with subway tile. If your floor is in good condition, you can tile right over the entire thing. The new marble that I put down went right down over the old tile. It'll save you a lot of money or time in labor. And all of this stuff is new. New toilet, new sink. I made a mirror super tall in this room because that makes the space seem much, much bigger than it is. Next up, the bedroom. In a small space, you wanna keep the bedding as simple as possible, so it looks clean, calm, and collected. I also closed the wall that used to go from the kitchen to the bedroom. This shelving unit almost goes all the way up to the ceiling, so that's great. Take advantage of the height in a room that's a tight space otherwise. Nate replaced the ceiling fan with a vintage chandelier to give the room more character. Well, thanks everybody. I loved having you in my home, my 550 square foot apartment in New York City. And I hope that for those of you watching, you realize that even if you have a small space, you can still make it great. And most of all, make it really comfortable. Thank you. Beautiful, thank, thank you. Well done. And don't you just love walking down your street? Oh, that's my favorite part. This is the thing that I think is great. People go, I go to Paris shopping. Mm -hmm. I'm looking for shoes and handbags and stuff. You're looking for latches. <laughs> <laughs> I love you saying, I came home with a lovely latch. <laughs> it's so true. I saw the best latch, honey. <laughs> it's so true. I'm standing on a Greek island in a, in a hardware store, and the owner is standing, smoking behind the desk like yeah. this. And I'm going, I know you have those brass, latches. unlacquered latches. Come yeah. on. It was... I'm going, I know you have that shoe. <laughs> Back. Next, get your pad and pencil ready for the latest innovative small space inventions and later what some call the skinniest home in America. We're back with uh, we're back with Nate Burkas talking about small spaces. Nate says that you can stretch your square footage and increase your storage capacity with the help of some new innovative products. So you're gonna show us what you found. Yep, absolutely. Okay, so this is, looks like a decorative mirror. Yeah. It's from Ikea, actually. It's like $120. And it actually opens to have storage for oh, everything inside. That's nice. So, Ikea. Right. Nice. You can hide all your ugly cosmetics. You know, yeah. everything goes away. I know. The other day, Colin Cowie was on, and he opened his, we saw I his shelves. Saw. You, yeah. But you live <laughs> like that, too. I've been to your house. Uh, not this quite like you Colin. Live. You live with all your like, little things lined up. Colin, yeah. well, <laughs> well, not quite that perfection. <laughs> not quite that perfection. OK, okay. Oprah, this is actually, um, this is really amazing. It's a, it's a home office, and this is great for people who have a small space. Uh -huh. Careful of your fingers there, okay. please. OK. Ah. All of that's going Yeah, where? and look, well, oh. this comes down. You don't have to move anything. Oh, you don't have to move it. And it turns into a bell. That is good. And it's, it's sturdy. That is good. Who's in this? Um, it's good, right? Yes. It's um, off-the-wall beds. Awesome. Off-the-wall beds. But I think that's such a great hey, concept. Hey, we're, we're in bed together. We're in bed together. <laughs> <laughs> we're like this. 
Yes, yes. We're in bed together. <laughs> okay, this is made by whom? Off this is off the wall beds. And it's a great solution because it literally takes That's up cool. no space. That's cool. So these as well. Yeah, what are those? They're, they look like benches, um, which, are, like you know. They, they and right now like they benches. are benches. And they are. And now it's uh, seating. And this one I love as well. Who makes this? This is Akimi Tanaka. She's in New York. Wow. Does she and have this, a store or does she do? I think, I think it's online. Online. Yeah. And this is great too. This is also from Ikea for yeah. people who don't have a home office or space for a home office. Yeah. This opens to reveal wow. everything you need. So this is all storage. That's see? nice. It is nice. Yeah. Keep your supplies in here. Yeah. Um, what was this cost you? Uh, $200. $200? Well, it's actually $199.99, but I'm just going to say. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's great. Um, sliding doors are a great option when you have a small space and you don't have room for clearance. Yeah. Okay. We're moving. We're moving. <laughs> We're moving. Come through here. Come through here. Yep. Good. Good. Okay. In our other room. Yes. Which we're in now. Yeah. We have this chair, which we found at J.C. Penney, and it looks just like a regular chair, but it actually has a drawer okay. built in for storage. That storage. That's great for remotes and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like great, great, great. You can put a book in there, several books in there. Yeah, Store a thing. secret. How much? This chair, $2.99. $2.99, yep. okay. This is um, a coffee table, and it actually opens up ah. via desk. That was my thing. Yeah, me too. This has storage all inside, so you yeah. can keep all your office supplies, everything yeah. right here. And I think this is a fantastic product. I love, I love the design of this. And who makes it? How much? This is from um, Julia West, uh -huh. and it's about sixteen hundred dollars. Sixteen hundred. I think it gets. It's a lot for the money. It's a lot. Yeah. I really do. Yep. So, and over here. Yeah, does this now close or no, just this comes over? Or down. I'll be like, ha, ha what? Right. <laughs> okay, good. Okay. All right, this uh, just looks like a chest of drawers. This is yeah. from Lean Rose. What's it going to do? I'll show you what it's going to do. Say, wait, now you're on to something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this actually slides open like this. Yeah. To reveal a desktop, or you could eat here if you had two chairs on both sides. Yeah. So I think this is a really beautiful design as well. Are these designed specifically for people with small, small spaces? You know what, I think even people who, who have big storage. space, yeah. you know, they, is something that does double duty is, is a great solution. So why not? Absolutely. I mean, if you, you know, you, you may, may want to be, you, if you're very comfortable in your family room, you might want a coffee table like this because you have everything at your fingertips. That's right under the coffee table. So, yeah. Do these chairs do something? They do. Okay. <laughs> this is great for a, uh, a small space and a, and a small kitchen, all four chairs come out like this. Yeah, and they so curve around, and they don't take a lot of... Yeah, the whole family can eat here, and it all tucks away. That's cool, because it just wraps around the table. Yep. Yeah, cool. Okay, over here. Over here. Pocket doors, another great idea. Pocket doors. I'll let you go through. Oh, pocket door saves from the angle. Hello. You get to play Vanna today. Okay. This Isn't is... this what Vanna does? She does yeah, that. exactly. <laughs> I know. Right. Okay, We're going to have small storage with a, with a noun, and um, yes. we'll figure it out. No, this is great, too. This is a coffee table, and it actually has two ottoman underneath it for extra yeah. seating. And then the ottoman also open up for storage. That's good. Isn't that great? That's good. Yeah. You need that. You need this. It's good for all your kids' stuff and all the yeah. stuff that you just. Yeah, and it's, it's fantastic. Because you run out of drawer space. That's fantastic. And actually, fantastic. this is light, so little fingers. It's, it's, not, it's not dangerous. Who it's makes dangerous it? It's a chest. Who makes it? This is World Furniture Mall. Okay. Joe Friend Cocktail Table. OK. Um, but I think this is, this is a great thing. This is really cute. Yeah. I could have done this in Martha's apartment, but I, I oh, like the idea of cute. building it in. This is a little vanity. I was hoping it was a bar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We can make it into a bar. Yeah. This is um, cute. Isn't this great? So yeah. makeup goes here, and then look at this. All of the storage yeah. is inside. All your shampoos, Everything. all your lotions, all Everything. your stuff. Everything. So this, and this just disappears. That so it looks like cool. a little cabinet. That is cool. Who makes um, this? What's this it is made by Conran. What's it and called? And it's called the Marie Gallant Vanity. OK. Nice, right. nice, nice. All right. Oh, these are great. These are folding chairs. I always think it's tough to find folding chairs that are comfortable. Yep. 
So these actually fold up, but they're upholstered, and they're from Ballard Designs, and they're $200. Nice for, nice for dinner party, too. Really nice. Yes. To bring them out like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah. could put a little O or something. No, not really. <laughs> Um, all right, and then this I think is this I think is great. Okay. This is a um, obviously a bookshelf, and this is fantastic not only for people who have small space but want to have people come over. What's it gonna do? I'll show you. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a bed. It's a bed. It's a bed. Wow. And it's actually for the picture. <laughs> yeah, you can you can hang something behind it. So I think this is a great product as well. That is, don't you like that, Arya? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Excellent, excellent job. So I know you and our team went through thousands of new ideas and products. Lots of ideas out there for people. And came up with these because yeah. this is what we wanted to share with the audience. Yeah. And we'll be right back. <laughs> Coming up, the smallest home we've ever seen. Uh, 96 square feet, and when uh, uh, Nate and I were just looking at that, we are saying, now we're talking crazy here. <laughs> but at 96 square feet, Jay Schaefer lives in the smallest house we've ever seen. Hi, welcome to my tiny house. Come on in. Jay Schaefer's itty bitty home is an astounding 96 square feet. Stepping in off the veranda into what I like to call the great room, I've got a lot of storage. In fact, this place has more storage per square foot than most houses would. Jay's commute from home to the office is just inches away. This is where I like to do a lot of my work. I spend most of my time here. A lot of people have asked how I entertain in a place so small. This little room, for example, entertains four comfortably. So let me show you the kitchen. Below the shelves, I've got my stove, which runs off the same propane tanks as the fireplace in the great room. I've got my water here above the sink, a very primitive but very effective method, gravity-fed plumbing. I collect the water up the hill at a spigot, and I do the same for the shower. Speaking of which, this is the bathroom right over here. That is to say, the bathroom is the shower. Toilet, another simple thing. Right now, I'm just using a composting toilet. Now let's go up the loft. This is the sleeping loft. It's really cozy. It's about three and a half feet tall. This tiny house makes my life a lot easier, except when it comes to making a bed. For Jay, living small is mostly about personal happiness. Aside from not needing anything more than this, I really like the idea of putting what I do have into quality over quantity. Living small is really a luxury in the sense that I have a lot of time now that I didn't have before. I can focus now on the other things I want to do in my life, rather than just paying a mortgage and taking care of a house. How long have you lived there? Well, I've been living in this house for about six months now, but uh, seven years now, including the house that was the same size before this one. Really? And you say living like this allows you to follow your bliss? How? So? Yeah, well, I, I just don't pay any mortgage, so I have a lot of, of time on my hands in which I do the things I love to do. Really? It's also some, some of what you were saying. I, actually, it's very charming. I mean, really. It's beautiful. We were joking about it, but really, very charming. Beautiful. And you live well. Thank you. Yes. I do. I really appreciate it. Yes, and you were saying that when you were looking at Martha's space, and as we look at all these faces, it causes you to look at your own life and think, absolutely. what do you really need? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I feel like as long as I know what makes me happy and know what doesn't, I can get rid of all that other stuff, and uh, it makes room for a really comfortable life. That's exciting. Exciting. Thank you very much for sharing that with Thank us. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. How much do you really need? Yeah. We'll be right back. Yeah. Next, one of the skinniest homes in America. Ripley's Believe It or Not calls our next small space the narrowest house in America. Let's look at this one. Jack and his son call the skinniest house in Alexandria, Virginia, home. As you can see, this house is less than seven feet wide. This was originally an alley, and in this alley was walking traffic and also carriage traffic. And if you look closely on the walls, you can see the indentations where the wagon wheels would brush up against the wall. 
the original owner on the left who owned this piece of property decided to stop this traffic by building a house in this alley. It was quite a challenge to develop a workable kitchen in this tiny space. And actually, this isn't that small of a kitchen. Down here, we have our freezer and fridge. Here is um, a four burner stove. Here is our oven. And up here is like our ginormous cabinets. And if that's not enough space, we have additional space under the bench seat here and the new cabinets we added in the corner. Every inch of this 350 square foot house is in use, even the hallway upstairs. We decided to build these cabinets. This allowed us to keep the full-size bathroom and also the full-size bedroom. And the main reason Jack bought this one-bedroom home? Actually, this garden is the reason I bought the house. It allows me to have more than one or two guests over at a time, and it really makes the house livable. What kind of size bed can you fit in that house? It looked like a big bed. How'd you even with, get it up there? With difficulty, it's a queen size, but as you see, we had to put it in sideways, and the box spring is actually two twins. Okay. So we got, that's the only way we could get it upstairs. Really? But what were you saying? It's, it's charming. It's beautiful. I mean, it's it, historical, it has so much soul, and I think it's, it's really beautifully done. Again, I mean, I think it just reinforces the point how much space do you really need. I mean, yeah. these people are living really beautifully yeah. in not a lot of space. Well, I think well. small, yeah, good things happen in small spaces. And <laughs> Thank you, Jack. We'll be right back. Next, how an artist brought the great outdoors into her little space. A little wild. celebrating small spaces. Artist Jane Mount says that living in a small space inspired her to create the apartment of her dreams. The overall theme for the whole apartment was trying to bring the outdoors in, to create a nice, natural-feeling safe haven for us from the concrete jungle outside. We framed those windows with these built-in bookshelves that allow for a lot of storage, but also really let the light come in and keep that sense of openness. What we also did was give each room its own feeling, so that the apartment feels even bigger because it gives you a sense of different spaces. For instance, our living room is very cool and relaxing. But when you step into the dining room, the colors are warm and vibrant, perfect for dinner parties. And a workspace for Jane, who is an artist. So this is our home office area. Here, this multi-purpose credenza divides the dining room from her office. On top, we can have uh, drinks, hors d'oeuvres, and any buffet if people come over. And now I'll show you where our wilderness theme really comes to life. As you come into the bathroom, our shower curtain has lots of animals and flowers. We used real river rocks laid into tile so that you get a spa feel on your feet when you walk through. It's very important to make small bathrooms feel very luxurious. Jane says she couldn't find an affordable vanity that she loves, so... We just bought an inexpensive wooden table, painted it glossy black, and cut a hole in it for the plumbing. Now, if you follow me to the kitchen... She installed glass for a backsplash over a thicket of trees made of wallpaper. One of the coolest things we did, which anyone could do, is you get cabinets that are white, and then you paint them with chalkboard paint. Then you can write on them grocery lists or menus. There used to be a normal solid wall about here. We took that out and replaced it with just a thin piece of frosted glass. The thin wall enlarged the kitchen and allows natural light to flow through the space. They keep that great openness. And inches away from the kitchen is the bedroom. I painted this portrait of a bear on an old hollow cord door in order to give the feeling of almost as if you are in a lodge, but without having any animals having to be killed. To save space, lamps are hung from the ceiling on each side of the bed. And check out these camouflage closets. And voila! This is a photograph we actually took of a beautiful scene we saw. And we had a company make it into custom wallpaper for us. We used it to cover some inexpensive cabinets, and now it's our closet. How clever is that? So as you can see, it's definitely possible to express yourself and live very comfortably in a small space. Good job. Uh, and I understand that you're also on a tight budget. 
Yeah, we were, and we used um, IKEA. All the cabinets in the kitchen and the one that's covered with the wallpaper are from IKEA. So they're really inexpensive. We just figured out ways to make them our own and really express ourselves still using things yeah. like that. I love the idea of everybody we've seen for everybody's house, houses is that they allow their houses to be an expression of who the, of them themselves. Absolutely. Yeah. I think that's that so great. Is that what it's supposed to be? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, tell the story of who you are in your home. Yeah. You know, let people get to know you that way, too. Well, thank you so much, Jane. We'll be right back. Good job. Coming up, a family of three living in a space under 300 square feet. The ingenious ways they make it work when we come back. Yeah, you were saying because you're raised in a small space, does it make you more adjustable to small spaces? Yeah, and I, th yeah, and I just think you have to communicate. I think it's good for families yeah. to grow up in small yeah. spaces, yeah. and they may be missing other things. Yeah. I know families have, have sized have dinner down dinner. because their houses were too large. Yeah. You know, it's a great it, blessing. It, it promotes communication. With and, the families. Yeah, yeah, so small spaces is a good thing. Because you can hear everybody. I met, <laughs> I met my fiancé on an elevator. That's a small space. A small good space. Things good things happen yeah. in small spaces. <laughs> How does a family of three live in 265 square feet? You know, that I would like to know. Well, here's how the Gillingham uh, Ryan family does it. Welcome to our home. Come on in. I'm Maxwell Gillingham Ryan, and this is my wife, Sarah Kate, and this is our little baby, Ursula. Hi, Oprah. To maximize their tight quarters, Maxwell and Sarah Kate live by smart design strategies. I paint the walls white to brighten it up and make it bigger. One of my favorite tricks which I do all the time, is taking the doors off of closets. It allows us to light the closet from within, that when they're pulled, you get this beautiful ambient light shining back into the room. You can't do that with doors. And another thing I've done is taken off all of the doors to the bathroom and the bedroom and replaced them with these sliding doors that I designed myself. They're made out of inch thick white wool felt. When space is sparse, spare no expense on the things you love. We cook a lot at home. We invested in having a really nice cooktop and a really nice stove down here. So this is our bedroom. It's half of our 265 square feet, and we've turned it also into the nursery. Everything we have lives in a very specific zone. We have Ursula's changing table and all of her belongings over here, and over here is her bed where she sleeps at night. Their platform bed is surrounded by custom-made compartments lit from within. All of Sarah's clothes, or folding clothes, are in these storage cabinets on the left side of the bed. All of mine are on the right side of the bed. Two clothes for comfort doesn't apply here. We live 365 days a year in 265 square feet. It's not only doable, but for us, it's a lot of fun. I think you have to be very organized with three people, correct? You do, yeah. Yeah, and everything has to have its own place. You, you do, and keep it there. Yeah, and anything that comes through the door, you have to make a decision right away. Do I love it or can I lose it? Really? Yeah, I heard, is that your 10% rule? That's right, yeah. You don't want to organize your space so you fit everything in. You want to organize your space so you fit in 90% of everything, you, that, your space, and have 10% open. If you have openness, the world will bring more to you. There you are. Thank you. That's great. So, OK, so what do you do if you have an argument or a disagreement, you know? <laughs> you know, you don't even have to argue. Just, just that, you know, I'm not feeling you right now. Well, like you were saying before, um, it's a great place to be in a family because you do become closer. We do have to communicate in better ways. but. Another great tip is that we live in our beloved West Village, and it's a great neighborhood. Our apartment's on the first floor of our building. We get outside all the time. Yeah. So, you know, I, I sometimes just go to the living room next door at the cafe if I need a little space. Really? <laughs> yeah, it's, okay. there's lots of space. But I love that line. Have you always lived that way? You have to have space, leave room for openness? To I have, through? yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, and I, I, I didn't choose to live in a small space to begin with. I, we want, we've looked at other apartments. We've looked to move. But honestly, we've never found a place that we loved as much as our little home. Yeah. And uh, you know, the community makes a huge difference. Yeah. We could live all the way out in, in deepest Brooklyn, have a lot of space, but we wouldn't have the vibrant community and the friends we have on the block. That's exactly what Martha said. Yep. Yeah. It's Loves true. it. 
Yeah. Wonderful. So that's why y'all are drawing all this good energy to you, because <laughs> of the way you feel about where you are right now. We'll be right back. Special thanks to all of our friends at Lowe's because they have locations nationwide and lots of people there to help you create the space that you want and deserve. And also thanks to GE. What was the name of that, that oven? Advantium oven. Advantium. I'll never forget it. The Advantium, Advantium oven. oven. Yeah. That's a cool thing. That's yeah, really cool. To GE for adding the appliances to Martha's kitchen. Martha, thanks you too. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Also. There was, uh, you had some help here from Ballard Design. Ballard Design, Wisteria, Michael, Michael Tavano, amazing. And my team. This time, working in 250 square feet, Nate Nelson, Lisa Miner, Lisa Morin, Julie Simpson, everybody who worked on this show with me did really? a great job. And the stress factor. Really? Oh, yeah. We're all going to go to see someone. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go, gonna all go have a talk. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was, I mean, it was, you know, very, very grueling and intense. Because you did it in what amount of time? Well, it took about two weeks to do it, but the buildings in New York are difficult to work with. You, can, you have to be out by 4 p.m. So normally we work around the clock. We couldn't do that in New York City. So Because I um, own a co-op. Yeah, because you own a co-op, yeah. and then the co-op has Four, to say yes. you can or can't do whatever. Right. Yep. Wow. Yep. Okay, no wonder. Well, there isn't any room to get away from each other. Yes, in you know? 250 square feet? Well, they're trying to bring the refrigerator in, and I'm like, what's <laughs> going on? And, oh, yeah, it was crazy, yeah. just crazy. But I thought this whole, this whole show's been inspiring for, I think, for myself and for a lot of other people, because it a helps you ask the question, how much do you really need? Yeah, yep. that's yeah. what I took away from it. Yeah. I really did. Yeah, so thank you. Thank you. Great job. Thank you. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.